Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Next week's topic will be on heaven and the world to come. Again, last week we dealt with Mashiach, so just following through. Now, heaven and the world to come are terms that are used by all religions, not just Judaism. We spend all our time and effort in this world trying to reach a place that we know very little about. We understand almost nothing about this place other than we believe that it is wonderful and we should strive to attain, to attain our place in it. There are no statements in the Torah that explicitly state that there is a heaven, but there are allusions to the fact. God had promised the forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that they would inherit the land of Israel. They never actually acquired the land. And we know that God always keeps his promises. So we see an allusion to the fact that after what we call Tchiat HaMesim, the revival of the dead, the forefathers will then inherit the land, and God's promise to them will then have been fulfilled. Also, after the children of Israel crossed the sea when they left Egypt, they sang a song of praise to God, which we say every day in our morning prayers, and it's called the Az Yashir Moshe, Uvenei Yisrael, that Moshe and the children of Israel sang. The phrase is written in the future tense, Az Yashir, will sing, and though we translate it in the past tense, sank. From here our rabbis learn out that the time will come in the future with, again, the revival of the dead when Moshe and the whole generation that died in the desert will be resurrected and he will lead them into the land of Israel. When we make a toast for someone or something, what we say is l'chaim, to life. Also, when we return a Sefer Torah back to the ark, to the Aaron on Shabbat, we say the verse from Mishlei 3.18, Eitz Chaim Hi Lamachazikim Ba, it is a tree of life for those who support it. Both of these statements use the plural term Chaim, lives, though we translate the word, word as if it was written singular, Chai, life. The reason is that we believe we have two lives, life in the physical world and life in that the world that we look forward to and the world to come. Now, according to Kabbalah, we believe that every soul, every soul that enters this world has three chances to fulfill its mission in this world and earn its final and complete reward. It is similar to kind of becoming a CPA, a certified public accountant. When someone graduates college, they have a degree in accounting, but they are not a CPA. In order to become one, they must pass an exam that has five parts to it. Most people pass at least three parts. Some pass four. Very few pass all five on the first attempt. So too in this world. A soul enters for the first time and fulfills a certain number of mitzvot. The soul is born again as another Gilgul, another life form, and it attempts to complete those requirements that it failed to fulfill in its first visit on earth. And then God gives it a third chance to complete its mission. It may return to accomplish only one objective, which may be the reason why some people die so young. They have completed their mission. We see this alluded to with Moshe, Mo Moses, our teacher. His name tells us about the three Gilgulim life forms that he had. The Mem in the word Moshe alludes to Moshe. The Shin to shame and the Gehei to Hevel, the three Gilgulim of Moshe. On the second day of creation, God created the firmament, the Rekia. As the verse states in Bereshit 1.8, Vayikra Elohim la Rekia Shomayim. And God called to the firmament, heaven. There is debate in the Talmud Chagiga 12b as to the number of heavens that God created. Rabbi Yehuda states two. Reish Lakish's opinion is seven. His opinion is accepted. So if there are seven heavens, what are they? The first heaven is called Vilan. It is the brightest of all and it illuminates the world. At night it is closed so that the world is dark. It is in regards to this heaven that we say each day in the first blessing before the Shema Yisrael. Uvetuvo mechadesh b'chal yom tov um, 
that in his goodness he constantly renews the act every day of creation. The second heaven is called Rakia. It is God's with the place where God places the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets. The third heaven is called Shikokim, and this is the place where the mana is prepared for the righteous in the world to come. It is also the source of mercy to help those who are in need in times of trouble. The fourth heaven is called Zavul. In it are found the upper Jerusalem as well as the supernal temple, which parallel the lower temple precisely. Michoel, the greatest of all the angels, is the guardian angel of Israel. Here he has an altar upon which he offers the souls of the righteous when they leave this physical world. The fifth heaven is called Ma'on. It contains the myriads of angels who sing before God all night. During the day, they remain silent so that the prayers of the children of Israel can be heard. The sixth heaven is called Makon. It contains many chambers with doors of fire. Inside these chambers are evil clouds and dews, as well as the strong winds associated with hurricanes and tornadoes. Also found there are poisonous waters, which burn and kill trees and plants when they fall on them. The seventh heaven is called Aravot. It contains life, peace, blessing, and success. It is made up of two chambers. In one of the chambers, there are the souls of the righteous who, are, who have already completed their journey to the physical world and which kept God's commandments. In the second chamber are the souls of those who have not yet been born. They exist in the form which their bodies will eventually assume. It also contains the good dues with which the dead will be resurrected. From the earth to the heaven we see is a journey of 500 miles. This is also the thickness of each of the heavens as well as the distance between one heaven and the next. Above them all are the four angels called the Chayot, which are described in detail in the book of Yechezkel. Above these angels is the firmament which illuminates all the other firmaments. Above this they tell us we have no authority to probe. Again, much like the reason why the first letter in the Torah is a bet, a bet a base. Open, closed on three sides, open going forward. What happened before, we don't know, we don't ask. In addition to everything created in the physical world, God created seven spiritual chambers in heaven. These chambers parallel the seven heavens, which I've mentioned earlier. Now the first chamber is called Livnat HaSapir, the brickwork of the sapphire. It contains two angels, one on each side under the direction of a great angel called Tariel. He stands at the gate of this chamber. By his side are myriads of fiery angels with eyes all over, each holding a burning rod. When a soul leaves this world, it must pass before this angel. If it, is not, if it has not sullied by sin, the presiding angel opens the gate to the chamber and allows it to enter. If it is defiled with sins and not clothed in good deeds, it is shoved to the other side of the chamber where it is beaten and led to purgatory. Another duty of this angel, holy angel, is to oversee prayer. All prayers pass through this chamber. If an individual has prayed with a minyan of at least 10 men, the gate is open and his prayers are automatically accepted. When all prayers in the world are completed, this angel gathers them all together and brings them to the Machpelah, where the patriarchs are buried. And from there, the prayers ascend to God Almighty. However, if a prayer was said individually, not with a minyan, the presiding angel examines it and determines if it was said with proper intent and kavana, concentration. If so, it is then brought before God Almighty. Now above the main gate of this chamber, there's another gate which is open three times daily to accept those people who do tshuva, who repent. Also allowed to enter are those who cry when they daven, when they pray. As we said many times, the gates of tears are never closed. The question of course asks, so why do we need gates? And the answer is given to keep out the tears of fools. The second cha chamber is called Etzem Hashemayim the essence of heaven. 
When a person is put to death by the Sanhedrin, the High Supreme Court, his soul ascends to this chamber where it is greeted by the presiding angel. The same is true of the soul of a person who was killed by Gentiles. When a person has been killed, killed by Gentiles, his image is engraved on the presiding angel's vestments and he brings it to the highest heaven. There this person is recorded in the great book. A person has been executed by the Jewish court. The soul experiences extreme anguish for not having kept the Torah. The angel comf comforts his soul and welcomes it inside since its sins were expiated when it was put to death by the court. The opening Mishnah in Pirkei Avot reads, Kol Yisrael yesh lahem chelek liolam haba. That every Jew has a portion in the world to come. And this is said by the head of the High Supreme Court to a murderer just before they execute him. Every soul must immerse in the fiery river Danur, Dinor, to purify itself, since there is no one who has never sinned. When the soul is perfectly pure, it can emerge from the river immediately. It is then dressed in its garments and brought up to the heavens into the domain of Michoel, the greatest of all the angels who oversees Israel. The third chamber is called Noga, glow. It is more radiant than the first two, and when a decision is made in the first two chambers, it is sent to this chamber, where it is detained and examined very carefully, seeking some defense for the soul. The angel in charge has the authority to change a negative decree, transforming it into merit, if they deem it worthy. There is a gate in this chamber that is only open on the Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh, also on Yom Kippur after Mincha. Decrees are issued for everyone in the world, and they are seal sealed either for life or death. This is also the chamber from where the decree that one's young children should die. The soul of these children are given over to an angel who keeps them in this chamber. And on every Shabbat in Rosh Chodesh, he brings these souls before God Almighty who blesses them. When God gazes on these children who have not sinned, he has mercy on the world. In this chamber, there is a pure force that crowns a person who has a portion in the world to come. The soul is crowned with a beautiful radiance, and with that, it ascends through the other chambers with no opposition. Before a soul ascends to heaven, it is ascribed with the 22 letters of the Aleph base of the Hebrew alphabet. It is then immersed in the river Dinor, where these letters are renewed as 22 lights. The fourth cha chamber is called Zuchut, merit. It is the most important of all the chambers since God's greatness is made known to the world through it. <clears throat> this chamber is different from the preceding one. It contains four chambers, one inside the other, as well as four gates. At the first gate of this chamber, there is an angel who is prepared to receive the decrees issued by the heavenly court. At the second gate, there is an angel whose job it is to gather all the merits of each individual. At the third gate, there is an angel whose job it is to gather together all the sins and wrongdoings that a person has done in this world and to place them on a scale. At the fourth gate stands the scale of righteousness. It is extremely accurate scale used to weigh merit and liability. The fifth chamber is called the Hava, love. This chamber has a gate and near it stands a great angel who speaks up for the children of Israel before God Almighty. He does so. This so that those who seek to do evil against the Jewish nation will not have power over them. In this chamber are all the souls that are destined to be born into this world. Since the beginning of creation, this place of souls has never been empty. When all the souls in this chamber are used up, then Mashiach will come. That will become becoming of the Messiah. This may well be the reason why abortion is always such a volatile issue. In this chamber, there is also two great angels whose purpose are to create love between the nation of Israel and his Father in heaven. The thick sixth chamber is called Ratzon, desire. It has six gates, four in all four directions of the compass, the fifth on top and the sixth on the bottom. These are known as the gates of desire. The presiding angel in this chamber 
is the greatest and most important of all the angels in this chamber. All divine mysteries are given to him. Nothing is known of what happens in this chamber. Even the angels in the other chambers do not know what is taking place there. It was here that Moshe's soul ascended when he was taken from this world. Also here are angels which receive the blood of infants who are circumcised on the eighth day of their birth. They place such blood in this chamber and in a time of divine anger, God gazes at this blood and has mercy on his people. In this chamber, there are angels who oversee the voices of young children who study Torah in school. The breath exhaled from these children's mouths is clear and pure without sin. And these angels take this breath and bring it up to the heaven where it sustains the entire universe. And this is the most precious in God's eyes. The seventh chamber, which is called Kodesh HaKadoshim, the Holy of Holies, is the most excellent of all the chambers. It is sealed and concealed from all eyes. It is to this chamber that holy souls come when they leave this world. And here they delight in the radiance of the Shekhinah and divine presence. Here they remain until the coming of the Messiah and the resurrection of the dead. So the question, after all is said and done, what is heaven? What reward are we attempting to attain? Our rabbis describe heaven and its reward with these words. Sadikim yoshvim v'yatroseim b'roshehem v'nehenem ziva shechina. That the righteous sit with their crowns on their heads and they bask in the ray of shechina. Now, if you understand what I've just said, please explain it to me. In reality, there's nothing in this world that can make us understand what our lives will be in the world to come. Much like trying to describe to a baby in the womb what life outside the womb would be like. However, we have a loving Father in heaven who has assured us that what is waiting for us is greater than anything, anything we could possibly imagine. And with that, we can only believe our Father in heaven and look forward to the coming of the Mashiach quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.